Dual extrusion printing for under $300? Really? Let's take a look at the Zone Star. So not too long ago, I was watching YouTube and I came across uh, James over at Print and Play's review of the Zone Star P802QR2, a dual extruder printer that's priced under $300. Now, I was really skeptical. After watching James do assembly and then running some test prints, I was sold. I had to pick one up. You can check out James's video right here, there, here. Right, like like here, maybe, there. So quick rundown on the specs. This is a 220 by 220 by 240 build volume. Dual extruder, obviously. Hot end supposedly gets up to 275 and the bed apparently gets up to 110. Although I haven't tested that yet. The max speed on this thing, well, okay, so I, I read one site where it says max speed is 50, another site says max speed's 120, another site says max speed is 140. I don't really know what the actual official one is because all the sites are different between GearBest and all these others, but what I can tell you is that you're really not going to print anywhere outside of the 40 to 60 millimeters a second when you're dealing with dual extruders. I mean, whether you're dealing with the same type of material in two colors, or if you're dealing with two separate materials, you're going to want to slow the prints down quite a bit. This is an all metal frame on this printer. It does use a Bowden style extruder, and the resolution on this is somewhere between 100 and 360 microns. So I get my printer in, so what do I have to do? Well, I've got to build it, of course. Let's look at it again compressing four billion years of evolution into 40 seconds. Now with the actual correct instructions, this build should be pretty easy and pretty straightforward. I was a little confused when I went back and got I was really confused when it's I was really confused when the video stopped before the wiring. I went back and watched James's video again, and lo and behold, he was talking about how great the instructions were. So if you actually use the actual instructions, it's a really straightforward and easy build. It'll take probably, I don't know, four or five hours, and there are some caveats. I mean, it's not as refined as assembling an Ender 2, which is already mostly assembled. You actually have to do a lot of assembly, but at least all the electronic parts are actually assembled. You don't have to put chips into the boards and stuff like that, or do any soldering. It's pretty straightforward. Plug and play, screw and twist. Excellent! Now let me make this perfectly clear. If you have any form of OCD like I have, and mine is minor, and you decide to buy this printer and assemble it, you are going to die. Bring out your date! Bring out your date! The wiring is so... It's like putting a drill through your head. Oh. Oh. Ta-da! Now, assuming you manage to actually conquer your OCD for the duration of this build, the cleaning up of the cabling mess is going to be like heaven. So, as I said before, this is a first thoughts on this printer. Or, maybe I didn't say it, but I am saying it. This is my first impression of this printer. It's a great printer so far. It's taken a lot of tweaking. First of all, it really helps if you use the actual instructions that come on the SD card. No! 
Just a thought. Second of all, it's not pretty to look at. Third of all, there is a lot of tweaking on this and there's not a lot of instruction. This is a brand new printer. So the community for this out on Facebook is not that large. It is growing and I hope that this printer starts to get a big following as does James because this is a great, great little printer for the price. But it is gonna take a good amount of tweaking. I've been working on tweaking this thing for three days now and I've finally got it to a place to where it's actually running pretty good. But all in all, it's a great printer. It's dual extruders for under $300. It's a good size build volume. It seems to work really well. It's just gonna take you a little time to get through all the little tweaks and parameters to get it to print nice and clean. So I'm gonna give this printer, what am I gonna give this printer? I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. So I'm gonna give this printer a go for now. I think it's gonna work out really well. It's gonna take some more time to get it all down and I'll come back and do a final thoughts on this printer but I need to spend a lot more time with it. If y'all like these videos please make sure and hit the subscribe and like button and don't forget if you want to get notified click that little bell and feel free to leave comments and suggestions. I try to answer them as fast as I possibly can. If you have things you'd like for me to cover I'll be more than happy to check them out. Hopefully this time next week we'll be doing a first thoughts on the Formbot Raptor. In the meantime, I'll catch y'all later.